what's the cause of arthritis? So remember Newton's third law of motion that to every action there is an equal and an opposite reaction. In other words, there is always a cause. Many are sick through ignorance. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you what some of the causes are and how you can get a turnaround in arthritis, whether it be osteo, rheumatoid arthritis, and also gout. And that's the good news. There, there can be a turnaround and we've seen many conquer these things. Arthritis thrives in a very acid environment. So an acid environment in the body is one of the number one causes of arthritis. Now, you can go back to look, old injuries is often where arthritis can manifest itself. And there can be different factors there. There can be an inherited factor. There can be a factor of injury to that area, which makes it a little bit more susceptible. There can be an acid environment. Often a breaking of these laws, as Ellen White says, that disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that arise because of a violation of the laws of health. And many people don't realize that. So I'd like to go through how a breaking of these laws could be a big contributing factor in arthritis we're seeing today. And I'd like to show you how restoring adherence to these laws can bring about a conquering of arthritis. Today, Barbara O'Neill, an Australian health teacher internationally known for her focus on the body's natural healing potential, dives into the important topic of gout. Gout is one of the most painful forms of arthritis, and Barbara O'Neill sheds light on this condition, emphasizing its severity and the need for effective management. Gout is characterized by sudden, severe attacks of pain, redness, and tenderness in the joints, often affecting the big toe but capable of impacting any joint, including the ankles, knees, elbows, wrists, and fingers. The root cause of gout lies in high levels of uric acid in the blood, which leads to the formation of sharp, needle-like urate crystals in and around the joints. This buildup results in intense inflammation and excruciating pain. In this lecture, Barbara O'Neill will provide valuable insights into the causes, symptoms, and natural remedies for managing gout. She emphasizes that understanding gout and its impact on the body is essential for maintaining optimal health. By exploring effective strategies to alleviate this painful condition, individuals can significantly enhance their overall health and quality of life. Let's dive into the secrets of managing gout effectively with Barbara O'Neill's expert guidance. Secret 1. Consume herbs when it comes to treating gout. Barbara O'Neill supports the use of herbal and natural remedies, emphasizing their safety and efficacy in contrast to traditional anti-inflammatory medications which can have detrimental effects on the cardiovascular and gastrointestinal systems. Turmeric is among the strongest herbs she suggests. Ginger. Ginger is one of the best anti-inflammatory herbs that we have. Probably on equal to it, especially internally, would be turmeric. And earlier in the week, I talked about taking high-dose turmeric, say, capsules as an anti-inflammatory if someone has inflammation in the body. And we've had some great results with that. Turmeric, which has strong anti-inflammatory qualities, can considerably lessen gout-related inflammation. High dosages of up to 6,000 mg per day are safe to use, and the dosage can be lowered when the discomfort goes away. Turmeric may be made much more potent by mixing it with cayenne pepper which makes it a great natural treatment for gout. There is another herb that you can take on the inside to get inflammation down, and that's turmeric. Mm -hmm. Turmeric's a very powerful herb internally to get the inflammation down. How often or how so, much? So, teaspoon three times a day? Sure. If it's the fresh turmeric, you would uh, triple that dose. If it's dried, then you bring it back. Mm -hmm. Another natural treatment that Barbara O'Neill suggests is lemongrass tea. Because of this tea's significant alkalizing properties, the body's pH levels are balanced and the uric acid that causes gout is decreased. Three or four glasses of hot lemongrass tea a day will help reduce inflammation and pain associated with gout and help control symptoms. These herbal medicines are a great complement to any gout management regimen because they not only reduce symptoms but also improve general health and well-being. Secret 2. Incorporate hydrotherapy for inflammation relief. Barbara O'Neill suggests hydrotherapy as an additional potent natural therapy for gout. 
During a gout flare-up, this therapy alternates between hot and cold baths to relieve pain and inflammation. Three minutes of hot water are followed by 30 seconds of ice cold water, and this sequence is repeated three times. Now to speed up the process, I did hot and colds. So this is a hydrotherapy, and tomorrow night, uh, Vanessa is going to give you a hydrotherapy demo, so you'll be exploring this more tomorrow night. What I did was I did the hot for three minutes, and she will be explaining in more detail why this works, and I did cold for 30 seconds. And I did this three times, so that's only, what, 10, 10 minutes? Doesn't take long. And it brings a lot of relief because it causes a massive amount of blood to come to the area and that pushes the old blood out. When pain is severe, this treatment can be given every two hours. When the discomfort subsides, it can be given every two or three hours. Hydrotherapy has advantages that go beyond just relieving pain right away. According to Barbara O'Neill, this treatment strengthens the body's inherent healing mechanisms, encourages the evacuation of pollutants, and increases blood circulation. Gout sufferers can notice a major improvement in joint function and general comfort by adding hydrotherapy to their regimen on a regular basis. The other thing that moves the blood, and we talked about this in our pain presentation, is hot and colds. So hot and cold application. So the hot and cold applications can be done by immersing the hands in in little bars for hot and cold or bowls. It can be immersing the feet. If it's in the hip area, then hot compresses alternated with cold compresses can be used. And that can be hot towels twisted and dipped it in, into boiling water and then twisted, wrung out, folded over. You always put, say it's the hip, you always put a dry towel there and then put that hot, hot steaming towel there and then put a blanket over it. If it's too hot, lift it up and just wipe the skin, put it down. Keep putting it down till the person can, can handle the heat. And then you, you leave it there for three minutes. So it's three minutes hot and 30 seconds cold. After three minutes, things start to slow down with the hot application. And so then you take the hot off and go over to the cold. And after 30 seconds, things start to slow down. So you're, you're using the stimulating effect of, of your hot and colds. So the three minutes hot and the 30 seconds cold, that's, that's the, the stimulating times. And you do this three times. So again, that's a powerful mover of blood into the area. And what you will also find is that can bring great relief to arthritis to pain in arthritic joints. With little adverse effects, this natural method provides a secure and efficient substitute for medicine, enabling people to control their illness. Secret 3. Apply castor oil for joint relief when applied overnight to painful joints. Castor oil can significantly soothe and reduce inflammation, providing much needed relief for gout sufferers. Castor oil, derived from the seeds of the Ricanus communis plant, has been used for centuries due to its medicinal properties. It contains ricinoleic acid, a potent anti-inflammatory agent that penetrates deep into the skin and tissues, reducing swelling and easing pain. Now, castor oil penetrates deeper than any other oil, and wherever castor oil penetrates, it breaks up lumps, bumps, congestion, adhesion. It will break up a bone spur, if the bone spur has been there three years, it may take three months to break it up. If it's been there three months, it may take three weeks. If it's been there three weeks, it might only take three days. So it all depends how long it's been there. But the key is consistency. Now, this is really not a poultice, it's a compress. And as a compress, it's not drawing anything out of you. It's a vehicle, this little pad is a vehicle to hold the oil so that it'll penetrate into you. So every day you might apply the poultice or the compress and after you've finished you might fold it over and then the next day open it up, put a little bit more oil and apply it again. So what you do is you, is you put 
a circle on in the middle. So I'll show you what I've done here. So the, the little castor oil pack is about this big. The plastic is about that big. And I've put approximately this much castor oil on. And because it's so thick, it's sitting above the pack. And as it slowly soaks through, it'll go out to about that much. And then when it goes on your warm body, it'll go out a little bit more. Can you see that? So if you do it correctly, it's not going to leak and get on everything because there's nothing worse than castor oil on the sheets or on your clothes. So we're letting that sit so that it can soak in. So where would you put that? You would put that on a bone spur. You would put that on sometimes even a, a sore wrist, uh, joints. You can put it on for that. One lady had very sore knees and found that that made a big difference. To use castor oil for gout relief, Barbara O'Neill recommends creating a castor oil compress. This involves soaking a piece of clean cloth in castor oil and placing it over the affected joint. Cover the cloth with plastic wrap to prevent leakage and secure it with a bandage. For added warmth and to enhance the oil's absorption, a heating pad or hot water bottle can be placed over the compress. Leaving the compress on overnight allows the castor oil to work continuously, deeply penetrating the skin and tissues. This extended application can help break down uric acid crystals that cause gout pain and inflammation, providing significant relief by morning. Additionally, the warmth from the compress helps increase blood circulation to the affected area, promoting healing and reducing stiffness. Secret 4. Adjust your diet gout management is heavily reliant on nutrition, and Barbara O'Neill stresses the significance of modifying one's diet to lower inflammation and uric acid levels. Gout flare-ups can be less frequent and the body's pH levels can be balanced with a diet rich in foods that generate an alkaline environment. So looking at what alkalizes, we're also looking at food. So what are the most alkalizing foods? So we're going to make an alkaline list of foods and an acid list in foods. By looking at this acid alkaline list, you can determine what is the best foods for arthritis and what are the worst. The most alkalizing is the humble lemon. And the lemon is acid where it should be and it's alkaline where it should be. Acid in the stomach to help you digest your meal. Dark green leafy vegetables. Dark green veg leafy vegetables are very alkalizing. We should be eating dark green leafy vegetables every day. So someone might ask, well, what about cooked spinach? Spinach is high in oxalic acid and in its raw state, the oxalic acid is in, is in a organic state. So it's alkalizing. But when you cook silver beet or spinach, the oxalic acid now is in an inorganic state and it can have an acid effect. So people who have arthritis or gout, they're best to keep to the raw cabbage. Maybe they have a cooked cabbage dish occasionally, but that's the only green that will, that will turn because of the oxalic acid in it when it's cooked. Also vegetables. Vegetables have an alkalizing effect, but for the arthritic person, there are a few vegetables that can have an acid effect and that's bell pepper. So when someone's wanting to conquer arthritis, the bell pepper must stop. Tomato. Tomato can also have an acid effect on someone who's suffering from gout or arthritis. Uh, eggplant, sometimes called aubergine. And also the potato. And I'm referring here to the English potato. The Fijians call it the white man's potato. I'm not referring to the sweet potato. The sweet potato is not a potato, it is a yam. So these can have an acid effect on the arthritic person. If a person doesn't have arthritis, um, they often can eat, eat this class of vegetables. But if you're wanting to conquer your, your arthritis, your gout, these things have to stop. Not forever, it's just till you've conquered it.
Also fruit, fruit is alkalizing. Millet, millet is an alkaline grain, as is quinoa, as is buckwheat. Buckwheat is also an alkalizing grain or an alkaline forming grain. A diet rich in fruits, nuts, seeds, and whole grains, together with dark green leafy vegetables, should be the cornerstone of a gout friendly diet. Purine rich meals can raise blood levels of uric acid so Barbara O'Neill suggests cutting back on or avoiding them. These foods include some shellfish, beef, particularly organ meats like liver, and vegetables high in purines like asparagus and mushrooms. Gout attacks can also be avoided by abstaining from alcohol, especially beer, and beverages sweetened with fructose. Including alkalizing beverages in the diet has additional advantages. For a very alkalizing drink, Barbara O'Neill recommends a mixture of 80% carrot juice, 10% celery juice, and 10% apple juice. Having two or more 250 milliliters glasses of this juice a day will assist maintain general joint health and balance out the body's acidic environment. Barbara O'Neill also emphasizes the importance of maintaining a healthy weight, as excess weight can increase the risk of gout attacks. A balanced diet combined with regular exercise can help individuals achieve and maintain a healthy weight, reducing the burden on their joints and minimizing the risk of gout flare-ups. Secret 5. Stay hydrated Maintaining proper hydration is essential for gout management because dehydration can aggravate symptoms and lead to flare-ups. Barbara O'Neill emphasizes the value of consuming lots of water throughout the day to help eliminate pollutants and lower blood levels of uric acid. In instance, drinking alkaline water can assist keep the body's pH balance and joints lubricated. To maintain constant hydration, Barbara O'Neill advises consuming 8 to 10 glasses of water a day. We're alkalizing the area. We're aiming to get more blood into the area to bring more healing. To ensure that the blood has enough water, it's important to drink adequate water. So water, 8 plus glasses a day. If you're used to 3 glasses of water a day, start drinking 4, then start drinking 5, and then start drinking... Six. A lot of people, especially elderly people, don't want to drink water because they don't want to have an accident or they don't want to have to rush to the bathroom and maybe not make it. So there is a way to drink water that will certainly lessen that and that is little by little by little. Don't drink a whole glass at once. Drink a third of a glass at a time or a quarter of a glass at a time or a half a glass. Do an experiment one day and have a mouthful of water every five minutes and just see how much water you you consume in a day just by doing it little by little by little by little so the water is important to drink and the water is also important out and that's your hydrotherapy also people may find that they can do this hot and cold in the shower especially if you have a shower head that you can move if it's the hip, you can do hot, cold, hot, cold. You can move it around like that. Sipping steadily throughout the day. Gout sufferers can help their body's natural detoxification processes and lessen the frequency and intensity of gout attacks by drinking enough water.